Stroud's University Track and Field Indoor Championships this weekend at Edinburgh. And uh, head coach Joe Koch for the men's team, head coach Chris Murley for the women's team. And Coach Murley, I'll start with you. Um, you have three women who have the top marks in the conference going in, and Danielle Smith in the 60, uh, Christine O'Connor in the high jump, and Liz Madden in the weight throw. What do those three have to do specifically to uh, claim their PSAC championship? Well, I mean, all three of them, uh, well, um, Liz and, and uh, Christy, uh, Liz in the weight and Christy in the uh, high jump have been very consistent all year at big marks. So, I mean, they just got to, you know, they're both uh, – Veterans, as you might say, Chrissy's a sophomore. Um, I remember watching her last year, being really disappointed. And she could she, you know, there was three girls. If, the, if one of them made the one height, well, actually one did, but she could have made the, you know, she, and she was really angry about it. So she's come back with a vengeance this year. Danielle's been a little up and down this year. Had some, you know, just some minor nagging injury things um, left over from softball career in high school. But um, you know, sh so we've been training her in a more of a strength background. The two four, but obviously the other night at uh, you know um, Susquehanna, she uh, she's ready to roll. She's fast, you know, mm -hmm. inherently fast, so she's ready to roll. So I mean, and she's confident. When she's confident, then other people are, have issues. They're going to get into trouble. Uh, Joe, you don't have any men that have top marks in the conference, but you got a group of guys who've been cons consistently top four or five in the league. Um, just go through a couple of them, starting with Donovan Tolbert in the triple jump and Travis Toth in the weight throw. Yeah, um, well, in the field events, those are the two standouts on our team. They've won several meets throughout the year. Um, <clears throat> they're both sophomores. They, they've been there last year, so they have the experience. So um, I think they're going to be you know, right in the hunt for a PSAC title. And like Coach Murley just alluded to, if they just compete the way they have throughout the season, it should be a great, great meet for them. Um, on the track, you go 200, 400, 800 with Keith Parker Washington in the two, uh, Dean Boham in the four, Blank Saparito in the eight, um, all NCAA provisional qualifiers and uh, all guys who have had success already. Yeah, um, uh, one thing that's kind of exciting, Greg, is our uh, meet two weeks ago at the New York City Armory got postponed because of weather, and uh, usually our marks are better coming out of that meet in our seeds are improved so yeah I think those guys are you know in some respects a little bit under the radar and should perform ahead of where they're seated so uh, they're all healthy uh, just like our field event people we just mentioned they're having great seasons so it should be an exciting championship for them as well. Uh, Coach Marley you guys on the women's side were third indoors last year and second outdoors and you really bring back all but two individual scores on right. that, that team you got to be really excited about that well we are you know you're excited you know we're not used to being in this position so we're, we're excited at the same time it's like wow you know in, in track you have one weekend you got to show up healthy and things got to go your way so i mean uh we're i wouldn't say we're 100 percent healthy we've got a few sniffles here and there but we'll uh you know yeah we're excited we should be right there you know i don't i don't know if shippensburg's catchable but um, you know they're not as quite as strong as they were like. And they have a lot of young people, so we have veterans, and I think that's going to help us in the long run. Uh, it does make a difference. A lot of schools have some very good freshmen, um, and uh, sometimes <coughs> the freshmen get really anxious, and especially in field events, you know, fouling and uh, missing at lower heights and things like that. So that's where our veterans come in. So, yeah. uh, two of your veterans, uh, obviously, in the distances yeah. in Corinne Fitzgerald, Rose Muscoli, they're kind of Finishing up their indoor careers, obviously Rose only her second year indoors, but fits all four. Right. Um, and coming off good cross country seasons, uh, just take a look at where they are right now and, and how they might perform. Well, uh, we're going to use Rosie. We're gonna, she's going to be our yeoman person. You know, she's going to run a couple relays and uh, well, actually just a one relay, um, four by eight of all things. But uh, and uh, she's going to run a mile and the three thousand. So I mean, she's going to be fairly fresh. Uh, Corinne, we're saving for the 5,000, um, you know, we can get a little oil strategy, mm -hmm. but, uh, and uh, she'll also run the three also in the afternoon, but uh, Corinne um, had some, um, uh, not injury issues, but some, you know, just some health issues with colds and things like that, mm -hmm. but she looked pretty sharp the other night, pretty relaxed to qualify, um, you know, the other night for the five, um, and uh, we're looking, she, you know, Coach Koch, you know, really mentors her during the year. I feel she's got a shot to steal that race, the 5K. Right. Um, yeah. And Joe, uh, your men uh, in the distance events, obviously a lot of these guys were the core group of the NCAA cross-country qualifier. 
Um, we'll go through a couple of guys. You have Frank Fezza, Chris Schneider, um, and, and how they looked before right. this weekend. Um, yeah, uh, that, that group that led us to nationals and cross country uh, will be competing this weekend. Um, we have uh, one or two standouts in the conference. Um, uh, Alex Monroe from uh, Blockhaven mm -hmm. and Matt Gillette from Shippensburg and Aaron Dorenzio from Cal. But outside those three who are all, all basically all Americans national qualifiers, our guys should fit in right in there. Whatever events they're competing in, they have a great chance of scoring. Um, so they're having an impact without a doubt. Um, as you guys put together your lineup, obviously you got to hit the qualifying standards and the individual events. Um, but then there is kind of some strategy and piecing together the kids who qualified in multiple events. Um, you guys especially with, with some of the depth on your squad, I'm sure that's something that you're looking forward to for the men. Yeah, um, I, I think, Greg, I don't want to speak for Coach Murley, but we kind of take it individual per individual. Um, Mike Saparito is a guy who the, the more races he runs, the better he seems to get. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he's a guy, when you get to a championship like this, he just doesn't tire out over the two days, and you can put him in several events. Other guys, whether it's where their event is in the meet or, or, or you know their past history, you feel more comfortable just maybe shooting for one event and let's give it 100% and, and maximize your potential for placing high and scoring well. So, yeah, just, you know, more or less, like I said, depends on the individual. Um, yeah, also, really, the yeah. also the schedule, too. You have to look mm -hmm. at the schedule and see, you know, coming back. I know we were, we were um, sort of hurting this year. We lost uh, two top uh, contenders on the women's side in the 400 meters, you know, due to injury. And um, we don't have somebody um, in the 400, and we're looking to try and put somebody in there, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, because of their other events, which are our main events, you know, uh, we're, uh, you know, we're just, that's the one event we don't have anybody in, so. Um, inside, yeah, yeah and, and last year outdoors when you were second, there were several events that you didn't have any scores. We didn't score, in eight, we didn't score in eight events. Um, you yeah. know, this year as you look through at least the qualifying list, it seems like it's more well-rounded. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's the way it appears, you know, I, I think we could, anybody that's in an event can score in it, yeah, at least even if it's a point or two, you know, so. I, that's what we're hoping. Obviously, that's, that's the way we got it set up. So now we got to, you know, mm -hmm. see how it rolls. Um, anybody we haven't talked about yet who you're kind of looking forward to, maybe under the radar, and somebody that you really well. Uh, to see I, I want to point out Nia Williams, who basically just been a hurdler for us. Did a little long jumping last mm -hmm. year. She scored in a conference meet her sophomore year, I think, out of Silby Rock Outdoors, and she she made a big commitment as a senior to work on the multi event, and. Um, She's, I think she has the third or fourth best, fifth best, best mark, and those mm -hmm. seeds don't really mean much. Um, but um, she, uh, we're going to use her in two open events besides. She's really strong, and she's anxious to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the women's long jump is the first event before the multi-event, so we're just going to have her take a jump or two and see what happens. She'll be in the first flight. It won't interfere with her warm-up for the hurdles in the multi. And then she... Uh, you know, the last thing I expected coming in this year, she's going to be a key leg on our 4x4. Four four. She's one of those people that, you know, they're in shape and uh, they're going to be, you know, they're, they're seniors, they're, they're strong, they're going to be competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she gets a stick in her hand, you don't want to get near her. Um, you've got three returning PSAC champions, not specifically in the, in the indoor meet, but right. athletes who have won championships. Uh, Fitz in the steeple last year, Daniel Smith in the 100-200. And then Lauren Benchella won the, the 60 hurdles right. um, as a freshman. Obviously, there's a standout in the conference in that event. And Tabitha Beam is from Edinburgh. But yeah. um, for Lauren, uh, what kind of meet will, will she be able to put together? Well, Lauren, um, I mean, you know, the hurdles is tough. Um, she's, she was a conference champ out of nowhere, you know, out of her mind her freshman year. Um, she's, um, you know, compared to her freshman year, she's not quite the sprinter she was, but she's much stronger. So, um, she, in fact, she was one of the young ladies we looked at sticking in the 400 because she could have handled, but it's just the timing of it. Mm -hmm. But she's, we put her in the 200. She qualified in that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's an event at the end of the meet. If she does make the final, that's a, the second day is where we always show up because well, I like to think our kids are in shape. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and then when she come back on the relay, she's our second eyelash event. If you hit one or you don't hit one, right. anything could happen. Um, Joe, anybody uh, kind of under the radar for your man and then second? Um, you've got a couple returning uh, PSAC right. champs as well. Cal Soden in the high jump, Mike Saparito won the eight his sophomore year. Um, and then a couple athletes with, with relay championships, Amaral Dean, uh, Brandon Mercer, Keith Parker, Washington. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, one, one event that we're really looking forward to is the men's high jump. Um, even though our guys aren't seated number one or two, uh, we have four outstanding jumpers. Mm -hmm. Three of them are actually uh, freshmen, excuse me, eligibility. Right. Um, so that's going to be a real exciting event. Coach Gate has done an outstanding job with this group this year. A couple weeks ago at the Deschrive Invitational, they placed first, second, third, and fourth in a meet with over 25 colleges here. Uh, last weekend they were first, second, and third. Mm -hmm. So those guys have been going back and forth the whole season, and I, I expect uh, that they're going to have an outstanding championship. Um, yeah, and then uh, our relays, like Coach Marley was just mentioning, are always extremely competitive. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, the guys you just mentioned who have been on the relays in the past, who have won conference championships, they obviously, with their experience, you know, add a lot to, uh, to a relay and make it much more competitive at this meet. So, uh, yeah, it should be, be exciting. Um, finally, obviously, this is the PSAC championship. You also look ahead to the NCAA. Division two indoor championships a couple weeks after that. Um, got several provisional qualifiers right now, but probably the one that stands out is uh, is Christine O'Connor in the high jump tie for fourth. Yeah, I mean she's she's like uh, last I looked was uh, I don't look often this time of year, but she was fourth or fifth on the list or tied mm -hmm. for fifth. So I mean she's probably punched her ticket. You know, um, Coach Koch feels um, you know well maybe we shouldn't say this on the air, but uh, somebody else you know, on the distance squad's got a good shot, mm -hmm. and then uh, a Saparito, I mean, he's gone for it. Right. And I think uh, he's he's got a good shot there, and, and probably Fezzet too. You know, mm -hmm. depending on uh, how things fall out, it'll yeah. be interesting. Right. And he expanded the fields this year, so that that might help some of these guys. Absolutely. And uh, real quickly, Greg, this meet also several of the kids who are on the list right now will definitely improve mm -hmm. their ranking nationally, and will then increase their opportunity or chances of participating in the meet in two weeks. Yeah. Right. And uh, obviously, this is the indoor season. You guys still have. A couple months to go when you yeah. get the outdoors. You need to think about the app. Well, well, we yet, just get started. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> the Warriors got Edinburgh this weekend. Good luck and uh, thank you. Best wishes. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.